In this session, we'll look at how to apply photo-based materials to InfraWorks buildings. I'm starting out in Google Earth. The building that we see on screen represents the inspiration for this project. I'd like to recreate this building in InfraWorks, and rather than using the stock InfraWorks facades, I'd like to leverage my own photographs that I've taken of this building and wrap those around the outside of the model. Before I get started, let's first recognize the repetition that we have in this building. The left side and the right side are virtually identical, both in facade and in height. This area in the middle is basically the same storefront replicated six times. Each of those has the same height. I'm going to use this information to my advantage as I construct the building and create my materials. Let's jump over to InfraWorks. Here we can see my starting point. This model was created using Model Builder. Now in this case, there was no GIS data for an existing building. That's all right, I'm going to create my own anyway. Let me drag this up to a top view and I'll zoom out a little bit. I will then open the InfraWorks menu. I'll go to Draw and I will create my building. I'm going to select just this multicolor facade for right now. Doesn't matter, I'm going to replace it with images in a little bit. I'll click to start and then I'll hold my control key to prevent the cursor from snapping to the underlying grid. I will click here and here and then I will double click here to finish. So I'm creating the left end of the building. As you can see, that's too tall. Let me press escape to deselect, and then I'll click this grip at the top. We'll assume that I've estimated the height of this end of the building to be 23 feet. So I will enter that, and then I will press enter, and I'll press escape to deselect. So I've got the left end finished. If I hover over this building, you can see that it highlights the entire object. That's because my current building facade detail is set to low. The trick to being able to map photographs to the outside of these buildings is to increase your facade detail to at least medium or to high. To do that, I'm going to go to the settings, and then under application options, I will choose model generation, and then under building facade detail, I will change this to medium, and I'll click OK. Now, we don't see a change right away. That's because I have to regenerate the model. I can do that by coming over and clicking Regenerate. Now this can take from a minute to several minutes depending on the size of your model. As a courtesy, it has also changed my view. Let me restore that by pulling up this bookmark. There we go. Now as I hover over the building, you can see how it views each face as being an individual object. This is what allows us to map photos to individual faces. To complete the building, what I would do is select this end. I'd hit Control C to copy it to my clipboard and then Control V to paste. I would come over and then double click to drop this end. Now they're identical. I could then click the little pad here on the move gizmo and move this into position. And then let me press escape. The next thing I could do is create another building that connects these two other buildings and it would have a lower height. I've estimated that height to be about 19 feet. Now rather than taking the time to draw that right now, I'm going to jump over to a proposal where I've already done that. There we go. We can see my completed building. Now when it comes to the facades, I'm going to flip over to Photoshop. Here you can see some of the images that I've taken of this existing building. I've got one of the south end. I've got another image that represents the storefronts. I've got another representing the north face of the building. This allows me to create a material for the north and south ends. And then I took another image here of the large storefront on the north side. Notice I did not take photos of every aspect of the building. Since there was a lot of repetition, I'm able to use just this handful of photos to generate everything I need. From these photos, I created a orthographic facade for the small storefronts. I created another one for the large storefronts. And then I created another material that I could use for the north and south ends. Now, if you're wondering how I created these, I'll walk you through the process in my next recording. For right now, let's jump back over to InfraWorks and we'll apply these photographs to the building. I'm going to start by going to the InfraWorks menu and then I'll click the Manage button. I'll come down to Style Palette. This is where I can generate my materials. I will then pull down and find the Material tab, and to create a new material, I'll click the Plus button. The material will be created from a texture. I'll select the texture by clicking the Ellipsis button. We'll do the large storefronts first. I'll click Open. Next, we'll set this material to be the same size as the face we're going to map it to. Let's click OK to close the Material Editor, and then we'll measure that face. I can do that by selecting the building. If I click this grip at the top, we know each of the faces is 23 feet tall. And if I click the grip in the corner, I can see the front face is 42.62 feet wide. Knowing that, let me press Escape a couple times. 
I'll come back to the material which is still selected and I'll click Edit. And then I will triple click the width value, we'll make this 42.62, and then I'll triple click the height and we'll make this 23. When finished, I'll click OK. I will then name the material by clicking its name property, and I'll call this Large Fronts, and I'll press Enter. When finished, I can simply drag and drop that material onto the face. As you can see, it fits perfectly. That means I can also drag and drop it over here, because those ends are identical. Let's do one more. We'll create the storefronts across the middle of the building. Once again, we'll create a new material. It's based on a texture. I'm going to select the small fronts this time, and I'll click Open. Once again, I'll click OK, and then we will measure this face. I'll do that by selecting the building. I'll click the grip at the top. We know it's 19 feet tall. If I click this grip in the corner, I can see that the face is 138.06 feet wide. Now, if you remember, the material or the image represents two of those storefronts, and there are six of them across the front of the building. What I'm going to do is divide this total length by three. Let me press escape a couple times. This is a good job for the Windows calculator. I can type 138.06 divided by 3, and I can see that my material should be 46.02 feet wide. That way it will repeat three times across the front of that face. Let's close this. I will then edit my material. I'll triple click the width, and we'll make this 46.02. I'll triple click the height, and we'll make this 19. When finished, I'll click OK. I can then click to rename this material. We'll call this Small Fronts, and I'll press Enter. I will then drag the material over and drop it on the front face. Using the same workflow, I could create additional materials for the ends of the building. I could then apply a stock library roofing material to the top. Let's jump to another proposal. And from here, we can see a finished example. So when it comes to building facades, you are not limited to the out-of-the-box InfraWorks library. With a couple images and a few minutes' time, you can easily apply custom materials to your buildings that better match the existing conditions. Would you like to explore other Autodesk infrastructure ideas and workflows? If so, please visit the Civil Immersion blog by scanning the QR code or by following the URL listed below.